So yesterday, I was just lying in bed when a thought came into my head. It's not a new thought. I'd wondered about this before, but this time I actually decided to dig into it. And if you're even a little interested in computers or programming, you've probably asked yourself the same thing. How was the very first computer program ever written when there were no programming languages to write it in? Sounds impossible, right? It's paradoxical. But as I traced the evolution of programming, I realized just how brilliant the human mind can be. Every programming language we use today, whether it is Python, C++, Java, was built using another programming language. So then, how was the very first programming language created when there was nothing else to build it with? This, my friends, is what programmers call the ultimate chicken and egg problem. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss how it all began. Believe it or not, programming actually started before computers. In the 1800s, there was something called the jacquard loom, a mechanical device that used punch cards to control weaving patterns. So what's a punch card? It's a stiff piece of paper with holes in specific positions. Think of it like an early form of computer memory or program. In the jacquard loom, the holes told the machine which threads to lift and which to leave down. By arranging a series of these cards, the loom could weave complex patterns automatically. This was programming without a computer. And remember this, nowadays we use keyboard to instruct computers, but previously it was done with the help of punch card. Next came Charles Babbage's analytical engine in the 1830s. It was an early mechanical computer made of gears and levers. No electricity, just pure mechanical parts. You could use it to perform calculations, but you had to instruct it carefully, almost like operating a factory machine. And here's where Ada Lovelace, often called the first programmer, comes in. She wrote the first algorithm for the analytical engine. On paper. No laptops, no text editors. She created a step-by-step -step method for the machine to calculate Bernoulli numbers. Her instructions looked like a flowchart of operations but written mathematically. These instructions would eventually be translated onto punched cards to control the machine. So the jacquard loom and the analytical engine represent the very beginnings of programming. Fast forward to the 1940s, we had electronic computers like ENIAC, one of the first general purpose electronic computers built in 1945. To program on ENIAC, engineers manually set switches and plug cables. ENIAC worked with electrical pulses. A pulse represented one, no pulse represented zero. These pulses moved through circuits to add, subtract, and multiply numbers. This is what computers understand only zero and one means. In early days, programming wasn't about typing code, it was physically wiring the machine. Want to add two numbers? You'd connect wires and flip switches. Imagine working on whole hardware level to do simple calculations. Then came the first real step toward easier programming, assembly language. Instead of typing endless zeros and ones, you could write something like this. Much simpler to read and write. But who wrote the first assembler? An assembler is a program that translates assembly into machine code. Here's the crazy part. They wrote the assembler by hand in raw machine code. Yes, all zeros and ones. And if you think they typed it on a keyboard, you're wrong. They used a punch card machine, like a typewriter that punches holes into cards. Each card represented one assembly instruction. A stack of cards became the full program, which was fed into the computer to run the assembler. Next comes the part called bootstrapping. Imagine you're alone on a deserted island with no tools. You carve a stick to make a small tool. Then you use that tool to make a sharper stick then a knife. Eventually, you build a whole toolkit. That's what early programmers did. First, they wrote a tiny assembler in raw machine code, line by line. Then they used the same assembler to write a better assembler in assembly language, which was much easier to work with. Finally, in the 1950s, we got Fortran, one of the first high-level languages. Its compiler, the tool that turns Fortran into machine code, was initially written in assembly. Fortran allowed programmers to write human-readable instructions instead of thousands of lines of binary. Later, programmers even started writing compilers in the same language they compiled, a concept called self-hosting compilers. With tools like Fortran, 
it became possible to create newer languages like C and eventually Python, laying the foundation for the programming world we know today. And that's how the first program was written without a programming language. So I hope I cleared out your confusion, and I'm sure you were amazed how the computers and programming language evolved over time. So the next time you write a line of code on your laptop, remember, it all started with punch cards, gears, and people hand coding in zeros and ones. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next one.